Johnny here with Simpson Math, and in this video, we will be introducing and covering trig substitution for integration. But before I get into some examples, I would like you to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the three missing side links of these three triangles. There, I promise I have a reason for this. I need you to go through the motions and find those missing side links. Okay, pause the video and go. Okay, hopefully you came up with, in the first triangle, the square root of a squared, the hypotenuse, minus u squared. In the second one, because you were looking for the hypotenuse, you should have found a sum under the radical. And in the third triangle, it's a lot, lot like the first, where you have a difference, and that hypotenuse is written first. Okay, for trig substitution, we will come across these three scenarios. We will be looking for the square root symbol, and we will be looking for an a squared, where a represents a number. So hopefully they're nice and pretty, like 9 or uh, 25. And u represents some function, some function being squared. All of these have a u squared. And again, we're looking for something pretty. Hopefully it's just x, but u is some function. So we have, we have three scenarios. And I'll just put down here again, a represents some number, and u represents some function of x. Alright, for these three scenarios, I will just tell you the secret here. We're going to use trig substitution, and in each one of these scenarios, I'm going to set up a trig function that relates the u over the a. So the function being written over or divided by the number. So in this first triangle, what I mean by that is I want sine of angle theta because that's going to give me the opposite over the hypotenuse. The second triangle, I want the same output. I want that u over a. So I think tangent will be good here. Tangent of angle theta is again u over a. Which trig function relates the hypotenuse to the adjacent? Well, that's going to be secant. Dealing with these three scenarios, we are going to let u be some trig relationship. So this is not u substitution, but trig substitution, where we're going to move out of x land and into theta land, or into trig. So for the sine situation, when you have the square root of a number minus a function squared, we're going to let u equal a sine theta. All I did here is I took this equation and I solved for um, u. So I just multiplied both sides by a. I'm going to do that for all three scenarios. If I'm given the situation where I have the sum, then I'm going to let u, whatever that function is, be a times tangent theta. And for the last one, if I'm given the function squared minus a number squared, I'm going to let u equal a secant theta. Alright, so and I've got these written above me. These are the three scenarios that we will be dealing with. And if we, if we come across these scenarios in integration, then I highly recommend we try trig substitution. That is, rewriting x's in terms of theta using these three scenarios. All right, let's get uh, started with an example. And I'm going to start with something that we already know the answer to. Let's do the integration of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Now we know this. 
this is one of our derivative rules and one of our integration rules. The answer here, or the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared is simply arc sine. But I'd like to show you using trig substitution how we can come up or confirm that answer. Okay, for trig substitution, first we just recognize the square root and then a number minus a function being squared. So this is that first situation where a would be the square root of 1, 1, and u would be the function that is being squared. So this is very simple. u is just x. For all of these scenarios, I would like you, or all these trig substitution problems, I would like you to draw a triangle and just that scenario triangle. Some of them, like this one, you can maybe jump to the end or jump some steps, but for this homework, this trig substitution homework, I want to see the triangle. So I'm first going to draw or recreate a triangle, a right triangle, in such a way that 1 will have to be my hypotenuse. 1 squared will begin with this 1. And then my u in this game, or the function being squared, is x. This triangle, if I were to solve for the missing side length, would be the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's what I've got in my integrand. Alright. This situation is the sine situation. So I'm going to let... It says up on the here, u equal a sine theta, but remember, u is the function that is being squared. So the function that's being squared here is simply x. So I'm going to let, let me write this down maybe, u equals a sine theta, but we know what u is. u is x. And a in this game is the square root of 1, or this hypotenuse, 1. Nice and simple uh, example to begin with. So we're going to let x equal 1 sine theta. So this is substitution. I'm going to need a dx if I'm going to do some substitution. So I can find the derivative of x. dx will be a cosine theta d theta. And I think I'm ready for trig substitution. That is, I'm going to rewrite my integration problem. But all of these x's and dx's are going to be rewritten in terms of theta, or these trig functions. So in the numerator position, I have a dx. Well, that just becomes cosine theta d theta. That's being divided by the square root of that stuff. Okay, well, I can handle this. Square root of 1 minus, and x is simply sine theta. So I'm going to replace my x with sine theta, and that x is being squared, so my sine theta is being squared. All right. Now, this is convenient for us, because maybe I couldn't handle the square root of a difference. But notice in trig, if I have 1 minus a trig function squared, that's the sine squared theta. This is a Pythagorean identity. I know that 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta. I'm going to make that substitution as well. The radicand can be rewritten as a simple cosine squared. Oh, and I know the square root of cosine squared is a little... You always have to ask yourself, well, is that going to spit out a negative? So there is a little bit of 
uh, domain issues, but I'm going to save that for the end. Right now, let's just go through the motions. The square root of cosine squared is just going to be cosine. Oh, and cosine divided by itself, well, that's just going to be 1. So I'm integrating 1 d theta, and that's simply going to give me theta plus c. Okay, well, like in u substitution, where we change everything over into u's, integrate, and then have to turn back into x's, similarly here, I've changed over into theta land, and now I need to go back into x land. So what is theta? Well, uh, I have an equation that relates x and theta sitting there. I'll just recopy it down below. We said earlier, or we let x equal 1 sine theta. If you want to solve for the argument of a regular trig function, you're going to need, it, need to introduce arc trig or arc sine. So theta, what was the input is now the output, is equal to arc sine or inverse sine of x. So theta can be rewritten as arc sine of x. And that just confirms what we knew from the beginning. The integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared is arc sine. Perfect. So this is the motions we will go through for these trig substitution problems. First, we recognize the situation that we are in. We have a square root, and under there we have the sum or difference of a function being squared and a number. If that's the case, we should be able to draw a triangle in such a way, and again, we're looking for that x over a, or that u function over a. So we just draw the triangle, the situation that we're in, scenario we're in, and then we're able to um, substitute in our trig. This Pythagorean is going to happen a lot. And then we come across some trig that we are able to integrate. And lastly, we turn back into x land. All right, let's jump to a another scenario, maybe a bit harder uh, problem. Let's try. The integral of the square root of x squared minus 16 all over x squared with respect to x. So right off the bat, if I'm trying to integrate this, um, I realize that I have the square root, and then that function being squared, or the x being squared, and then 16 is a perfect square. So I'm thinking this must be trig substitution. I'm going to draw the triangle to help me visualize which scenario I'm in. All right, so I need the, oh, yeah, this is going to be, the hypotenuse has got to be x. If I have that difference, that's just, that has to be it. That has to be the x. And going back to my scenarios, if I need to look, um, well, that happened here. Oops. Where u is the function. So that must be this situation. I'm going to put the value that is being squared as my adjacent. So I'm going to, make 4 my adjacent. And then if I were to solve this triangle for the missing side length, then yes, that would be the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus that side length squared. Or minus 16. Okay. In this scenario, we have x over 4. So that's going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent, so that must be the secant situation. I'm going to let the function that's being squared, which is just x, I'm going to let x equal it's a secant theta. a in this game is the number 
that's being squared, or the square root of 16, so 4. Okay, <laughs> that's trig substitution. Now, if I substitute in these x's, I will need a dx. So I'm going to go off and find the derivative of x, and the 4 just kind of kicks out, and the derivative of secant is secant tangent. And we have a d theta with that. I think I'm ready to just substitute. The square root of x squared minus 16 will become the square root of 4 secant theta being squared minus 16 over, again, another 4 secant theta being squared. And then dx is all of that. So I'm still multiplying here times 4 secant theta tan theta d theta. And I can do some simplification. Of course, 4 secant theta all being squared is 16 secant squared theta. I'll go ahead and just write that. And I'm going to do a lot of simplification in this next step. Uh, I see some reduction that can happen. I have secant squared in the denominator position and a secant in the numerator. So I can reduce one of these secants. And I can reduce a factor of 4. So it leaves me with a 4 in the denominator position, but that 4 is gone. And then I was looking for a secant squared and a 1. That way I can use one of the Pythagorean identities to rewrite this difference as a single trig function squared. So this 16 is in my way. I'm going to factor a 16 from the radicand, and then I'm going to split up the radical, like so. Now I see some more simplification I can do. The square root of 16 is 4, so these 4s completely uh, just reduce each other. And then secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared, using a Pythagorean identity. Oh, well, if I have the square root of tangent squared, well, those square root and square kind of, un kind of undo each other. So I'm just left with a tangent up top. Oh, and then tangent times tangent, I've got tangent squared. Alright, yeah, this is maybe much nicer. This is something that I'm familiar with. In the previous videos, we talked about strategies for tangent and secant and how to integrate secant. So if you remember back to that strategy, um, we kind of want tangent to be rewritten as secant in this situation because I see a secant squared hidden in there. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean again. This time I'm not restricted by the radical symbol. So I'm going to bust this up into secant squared minus 1, and that's going to give me the ability to rewrite this as several integrals. So I just use that Pythagorean identity again, this time like in reverse, and now that I have a difference and this monomial in the denominator, I am able to separate this 
into two different integrals. So I'm integrating secant squared over secant, which is just a single secant, and then I have the integral of 1 over secant, and the 1 over secant is the reciprocal of secant, which I know is cosine. Integrating both. Oh yeah, this is the fun one. We call that the banana rule, maybe. But we know this one now. The integral of secant theta is equal to the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. And from that, I'm subtracting. And let's see. The derivative of sine is positive cosine. So the integral of cosine is sine I have my plus c, and this is great. I just need to take these thetas and turn them back into x's. So how does theta relate, relate to x? Well, I have this triangle that I drew from before. So I'm going to go back to that. So these triangles not only help us set up the problem, identify the scenario, help us identify which trig function we need to be using in the trig substitution. But right here, I also need theta and this triangle to help me simplify or answer these. Because secant theta is asking, given this theta, what is the hypotenuse over the adjacent? This is simply x over 4. To that, I need to add tangent theta. That's well, opposite over adjacent. So the square root of x squared minus 4 squared, I could have called that 16, over 4. And then sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that side length over x. And these do have a common denominator, so maybe you want to spend one more step to just add those two fractions together, but I'm looking at a good final answer right there. So let me walk through that problem quickly one more time. I saw the integral, I saw the square root, I knew this had to be trig substitution. I drew a triangle with that square root in it. At the same time, I'm thinking to myself, I need a x over a, or that function over a. So I drew this scenario, and if you have a cheat sheet you need to reference, that's okay. And then according to the cheat sheet, I need to let x equal a secant theta. Made my substitution, that allowed me to use some Pythag, which gave me this integral dealing with just trig, and then I relied on my previous knowledge on how to handle this situation busting up tangent into terms of secant and then I was able to integrate those secant or those uh, trig functions. All right let's see if I can amp up the difficulty level one more time and I have one more example or one more scenario to show you. So let's do that one together. Let's integrate dx over the square root of 16 plus 4x squared. Alright, I noticed the trig substitution scenario. I've got the square root of an a squared plus this function being squared. Now the only difference is my function here is not x. I'm going to draw my triangle. I recognize that because I have the sum, what I'm looking at is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is the square root of 16 plus 4x squared. I'm wanting a trig function that relates 
the function over a and we said sine is good, secant is good, and tangent is good. Uh, well, not sine, not secant. So this must be the tangent scenario. I'm going to put the function that is being squared as the opposite, and then my a as my adjacent. Okay, well, what, what is this over here? What's being squared? It's not x not 4x, is if I take 4x and square it, I would get 16x squared. So this must be 2x. If I take 2x, the fat function squared would give me 4x squared. All right. So sometimes your functions are not pretty little x's, but this is where that u comes into play. I want u to be the function that is being squared. So I'm going to let u equal a tan theta, where u is the function being squared to x equals 4 tangent theta. So in this scenario, x will be equal to 2 times tangent theta. A little bit of manipulation, but we're able to handle that. And I just need a dx if I'm going to do trig substitution. The derivative of x is 2 times secant squared theta d theta. I'm ready for my trig substitution. That is, I'm replacing all of my x's with thetas. In the numerator, I have 2 secant squared theta d theta. In the denominator, I have the square root of 16 plus 4 times. And my x is 2 tangent theta. And that's being squared. So I can handle that. That is 4 tan squared. So that's 16 tan squared. Oh yeah, this is the same situation we had before where they both had a 16 and so we factored out the 16 and pulled out the radical of 16. I'm going to do the same thing. This time I have 16 plus 16 tan squared. I'm going to factor 16 and then rewrite that radical of 16 away from the other radical. All right. 1 over the square root of 16, that's just a fourth. That's a constant. I'm going to pull... Oh, wait, there's a 2 there. So 2 fourths reduces to 1 fourth. So I'm going to take that 1 fourth. No, that's not right. I uh, cannot skip steps. All right. This is the integral of... Uh, I'm going to do this. This is simply 4. 2 divided by 4 is a half. I'm going to pull out that... Under the radical, I have 1 and tangent squared. Using Pythag, they will sum up to secant squared. Oh, but it's under the radical. So the square root of secant squared just becomes secant. And I have secant squared up top, so one of those secants will reduce. And I know this integral. This is going to be 1 half times the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. I'm done with integration, so I'll add the plus c constant. Oh yeah, and then these thetas are in 
uh, relationship with this triangle. So it's asking me for secant theta. Secant theta is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. I'm going to think about this ahead of time. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. They have the same denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and add those two fractions. All right, that was fun. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's do uh, another example, this time with limits of integration, just so uh, so you can, you know, watch someone do it one time at least. Um, and I'll go back to the sine scenario and see if I can make that situation maybe a little bit harder. Okay, we have the integral from 0 to the square root of 2 of x squared over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Hopefully we acknowledge or we can see the triangle or the trig situation. I'm going to draw a triangle in such a way that this is one of the side lengths of the triangle and I'm kind of looking for that in this game, x over 2 um, relationship being sine, secant, or tangent. I know this is not the hypotenuse because of the uh, difference. I know 2 is my hypotenuse because it's the first thing in the difference. So there's my a. I need that x over the a. So if I were to put it here, that would be cosine. So then it's got to be over here. Opposite over hypotenuse, that's sine. That's one of the three that we have approved upon. So this must be the situation, and therefore my side length must be the square root of 4 minus x squared down here. In this scenario, we will let u, the function being squared, equal a sine theta. Well, since u is simply x, I'm going to let x equal a sine theta. I need a dx. The derivative of x is 2 cosine theta d theta. I'm ready for the substitution. Oh, no, I'm not. Because my limits of integration are in x land. So I can't really put an equal sign if I use these same limits. So let's switch our limits. Let's see. If x is the root of 2, then I want to find theta. So let's take this relationship between x and theta, and let's solve that for theta. Well, if I want to solve for sine of theta, I want to get the 2 over, over here. If I want to solve for theta, then I'm going to use inverse trig to interchange my inputs and outputs. So theta is equal to arc sine of x over 2. This is how I can solve for theta given some x. The first x in my game is a square root of 2. So when x is the square root of 2, theta will equal arc sine of root 2 over 2. Oh, that's a pretty um, value on the inner circle. That is pi fourths. Let's do when x equals 0, the lower limit. Theta will equal 
arc sine of 0 over 2, 0 divided by 2 is 0, arc sine of 0 is still 0. Okay, now I think I'm ready for my substitution. My lower limit is now 0 in theta land, and my upper limit is pi fourths. My numerator is x squared. Well, that's simply 2 sine all squared, so that's 4 sine squared theta. Down below, I have the square root of 4 minus that same thing, 4 sine squared theta. And the dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. Oh yeah, same trick. The 4s are kind of in my way. I'm going to factor a 4 out and then split apart my radical. So I have the square root of 4 times the square root of 1 minus sine squared. Okay. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so the 2 in the numerator and denominator position can reduce each other. In the denominator, I'm going to have the square root of, using Pythag, cosine squared, which is simply cosine, and I have a cosine in the numerator, so these cosines will reduce. This is just a single cosine. It is reducing with this single cosine. I'll pull the 4 out of the integration process. And all I'm doing here is integrating sine squared theta, d theta. Oh, something happened to my video. So let me just quickly finish this example. Okay. We had uh, 4 times the integral over 0 to pi fourths of sine squared d theta. And I know how to handle this from a previous lecture. When we were given sine and it was even, the way we handled it is we rewrote it as the cosine double angle. So we have 4 times the integral still from 0 to pi fourths. And I can rewrite this as 1 half times 1, and this is the difference, minus cosine double angle d theta. All of that is equivalent to sine squared theta. Now, what I can do, well, I can pull out the half. 4 times a half is 2. And it looks like I can then separate this out into two different integrals. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put a big old bracket because the 2 is outside of that process. But now I'm integrating 1 d theta minus another integral of cosine 2 theta. And both of these have those same limits of integration. I'm evaluating this at pi fourths and at zero and finding that difference. Okay, but integration first. Well, that's just theta, and we've done this enough times. I've got that memorized now. So in my next step, I'll have two times theta minus one half sine two theta, but I still need to evaluate this from pi fourths and zero and find the difference. I think I'll go ahead and just take care of that. I'm going to be very careful with my parentheses here. All right, pi fourths minus one half sine double that pi fourths minus, I'm going to introduce a new set of parentheses, 
because now I need to rewrite this with zeros. 0 minus 1 half sine of 2 times 0. All right, well, 2 times 0 is 0. Cool. Sine of 0 is 0. Half of 0 is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. Okay, this is great. This is 1 giant minus 0. I don't have to care about it any longer. So I just need to simplify this. Well, 2 times pi fourths, that reduces to pi halves. Sine of pi halves would be positive 1. So that's just one, one times a half, that's just a half, okay. So pi fourths minus one half. Um, maybe leave it like that, maybe factor out a one fourth, maybe distribute the two. We're really done, let's see. Pi halves minus one, that's a nice pretty answer. I wanted to talk about domain but I think maybe I'll do that in a different video, having technical difficulties. Okay, go do your homework.